We are clear in principle that what we need is a targeted discretionary power to allow us to exclude British nationals from the UK. Passports are not an automatic right. Too little, too late. Estimates range from 500 to 1,500 British citizens are already fighting with the Islamic State overseas. I can't think of a meeker response than taking away some paperwork from them. British security intelligence have raised their country's terror alert from substantial to severe, meaning an attack on Britain is highly likely. An estimated 150 Canadian Muslims are fighting overseas, too. My next guest is a controversial British imam who has long advocated for Britain, Britain to become a Muslim state and follow Sharia law. In a tweet in August, he said, whatever Prime Minister Cameron and May do, they can't stop the rise of the awakening giant called the Muslim Ummah. Sharia will one day be law in the UK. Here to explain things is Imam Anjum Chowdhury. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Chowdhury. You're welcome. I have a question for you. Tonight, Barack Obama will outline his war strategy against the Islamic State. I know it's a, an absurd question to ask, but I feel I must. Whose side are you on in this war? Well, as uh, his uh, predecessor said, you are either with us or with the terrorists. So I'm certainly not with George Bush or the American regime. And in fact, um, if you want to galvanize the whole of the Muslim world against you, then obviously let the Americans lead because they are the biggest murderers and the criminals as far as Muslims are concerned. So you're actually rooting for the Islamic State? Well, you know, I believe that there are two camps in the world today. There are those people who believe sovereignty and supremacy belongs to God. And whether we like it or not, at the head of that is Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the Khalifa. On the other hand, you have those people who believe sovereignty and supremacy belongs to man. And you have at the head of that Barack Obama. And Barack Obama obviously is a murderer of Muslims. So how can I be with him? Well, let me ask you, if a young Br British Muslim were to seek your counsel and said he was considering to join the fight with the Islamic State, to go over to Syria, Iraq, would you try and talk him out of it or would you encourage him to go? Well, you know, I don't deal with hypotheticals. I believe that the Muslims, wherever they are in the world, have the right to defend themselves. And let's face it, Muslims are defending themselves in Syria, in Iraq, in Palestine, you know, in Kashmir, in Chechnya, wherever you look in the world, we are the ones who are defending ourselves. So why shouldn't Muslims travel wherever they are in the world to stand with their brethren and to defend themselves? I mean, it is not uh, the Muslims who keep changing the goalposts. Remember, Sheikh Osama bin Laden was a freedom fighter until he started to fight against the Americans, and then they called him a terrorist. So I think the Western camp really need to make up their minds whether the Muslims are actually defending themselves or whether they're terrorists. Well, let me ask you about uh, some of the graphic images we've seen from the Islamic State, where, for example, they have killed uh, the Yazidi sect. They've slaughtered them, cutting off heads, raped women. They've done the same to Arab Christians mm -hmm. uh, in Iraq. Those are not Americans. That's not the evil George Bush or Barack Obama. Those are people who have lived in the Middle East for thousands of years. Is that a noble war is what the Islamic State is doing to the Yazidis and Arab Christians. Do you support that? Well, you know, what, what uh, amazes me is that you invent Dracula and Frankenstein, and then you begin to believe, uh, you begin to believe your own stories. They said but these are the Islamic State's Yazidis own propaganda. The uh, but th these are well, documents let me, let me released. Answer, let me just answer the question. Well, let me just answer the question. They said there were 40,000 Yazidis on the mountain. Then they said there were 20,000. Then they said there were a few thousand. Then they said there were a few hundred. And a few hundred actually lived there anyway. The Americans said there were not enough to airlift. As far as the Christians are concerned, they're actually queuing up to come back into Mosul because they believe life under the Sharia is much better than the American puppet, Nuri al-Maliki. So I believe this is propaganda. You so you don't believe it's true that you don't believe these massacres the are true? Were eating babies. It wasn't true. So you, you dispute... These are not true. You know, there is no Muslim... There is, well, of course, you know, I believe that uh, no Muslim in that region who is implementing the Sharia would ever target women and children. They are not killing uh, the non-Muslims indiscriminately. Rather, they're inviting them to Islam. And if they don't embrace Islam, they can live under the Sharia. But certainly there are people who are criminals. There are people who fought against the Muslims. Indeed, the Nusairis, the Shia in, uh, in uh, Syria, killed over 200,000 people in that region. Of course, there are criminals who need to be uh, tried. And maybe they will face capital punishment. And the same applies to the people in Iraq. Mr. You know, Chowdhury, I, I have one more question before we, people were killed. before we go yeah. to break. I don't want to cut you off, but I want to get in as many questions as I can. And this is yeah. an important one, if I may. Some people, inclu including quite often Barack Obama himself, say that the Islamic State 
and other Muslim terrorist groups that have the word Islam in their very name don't represent authentic Islam. They say that's not Islam. I'll tell you what Islam is. Do you agree with him? Do you think the Islamic State represents true Islam? Well, well, I know that uh, Barack Obama likes to parade himself as a sheikh and an imam nowadays, but the fact is that he is at war with Islam and Muslims. You know, what the British and the Americans have done, in fact, is that they've completely ignored the foreign policy, and the reason why we are in this quagmire, you know, because of their foreign policy over the last 10 years, and they want to say, oh, it's because of Islam, it's because you believe in the Sharia, because you believe in the Khilafah. No, this is a campaign against Islam and Muslims. They want Muslims to accept democracy and freedom, and really to become apostates, and we will never do that. We we want the Sharia, we support the Khilafah, we want the whole world, in fact, one day to be governed by the divine law. Whether the, Bar the, Barak's Obamas, the Barack Obamas and the Cameras like it or not, it's coming to a place near you. Mr. Chowdhury, stay right there. We're going to come right back after this commercial break. More with Anjum Chowdhury. We're back with Anjum Chowdhury, a controversial imam from the United Kingdom. Uh, Mr. Chowdhury, you've gone on record calling for Sharia law in the UK, in the West and elsewhere. Would you support the use of violence to achieve Sharia law. You know, I believe that the whole world belongs to God, and therefore, wherever you are as a Muslim, you must call for his law. But, you know, I believe in a covenant of security, meaning if my life and wealth is protected, I do not target the life and the wealth of the people with whom I live. But that does not mean that I should be silenced. I should not call for the Sharia. I should not elevate the people out of worshipping their own desires to worshipping our Lord, Allah, Tabaraka wa ta'ala. So, you know, I will call for the Sharia wherever I am in the world. If I was in Canada, I will do it there. But I'm not asking if you would, uh, what geographic limits. I'm talking about what tactical mm -hmm. limits. I mean, a lot of religions preach and have missionaries and evangelists. What I'm asking you, sir, with respect, is something you've been mm -hmm. dancing around, and, yeah. and that is, do you support violence uh, to create this uh, khilafah, this caliphate? Do you support violence mm -hmm. to achieve the goal of a worldwide ummah? Well, what I would say to you is that it could only come to places like Britain and Canada in one of four ways. Either the people will embrace Islam and they will implement the Sharia, or a section of the community will, like the army or, you know, the people in charge, there will be a military or an ideological coup, or there could be a conflict like happened in Bosnia and other places, the Muslims could end up in a position of authority. Or lastly, which is the most likely scenario, is that the Khilafah or the Islamic State will remove the obstacles in the way of implementing the Sharia outside of its own frontiers. So I believe that there are certain ways in which the government will be removed, but, you know, I hope that it's peaceful. I hope the Muslims can implement the Sharia. I hope that we can share, you know, the beauty of Islam as we did in Andalusia, in the heart of Europe for over 800 years. Let me ask you this. Uh, you mentioned Barack Obama several times. He himself had a Muslim father and then a Muslim stepfather. Do you regard Barack Obama as a Muslim or as an apostate? And do you believe he should be punished for adopting Christianity as his faith? No. Actually, you know, the Prophet Muhammad uh, وسلم, said each person is born on the natural disposition, the fitra, and the mother and father will make him a Muslim, make him a Jew or a Christian or a fire worshiper. So he was, uh, you know, uh, he was innocent until he became an adult and then he adopted Christianity. So he's not an apostate. He's a Christian. And obviously, you know, the fact that his mother and father may have been Muslims is irrelevant. When people become mature, they adopt, obviously, whatever they want to. Otherwise, if they're left to their natural uh, disposition, they will be Muslims. Uh, let me ask you a question about the UK itself. Recent revelations about uh, the Pakistani Muslim rape gangs in Rotherham. Uh, were those rapes of white Christian girls, in your view, were those rapes un-Islamic? Of course, you know, there's nothing called rape in Islam whatsoever. You can never force even your own wife to have a relationship with you. It's by consent. You know, if people are raping uh, women or they're raping children, they will face capital punishment under the Sharia. And what I say is that the solution for things like what took place in Rotherham is, in fact, to have an Islamic state which outlaws things like alcohol, drugs, pornography, the, you know, the exploitation of man and woman from cosmetics and fashion. You know, when you reduce human beings to, you know, uh, inhumane, you know, sex objects, then, of course, well, Mr. Chair, you're saying this, but the only, right now, uh, the Islamic uh, State... I don't mean to interrupt you, but... Uh, the, but the Islamic State, which you have expressed some support for, uses yeah. rape as a uh, weapon of war against Christians no, and Muslims. This is nonsense. No, no, no. It's You're denying rubbish. that? 
There is no example of that whatsoever. There's no example of that whatsoever. This is your own propaganda. How about That's the Quran? Like saying, you invent Frankenstein and you, and then you begin to believe in him. What about the it's Quran and and it's, its uh, passages true. about the sex slaves? The Nusairis in the, wait a second. The Nusairis in uh, in Syria and Hezbollah and Iran, they're the ones who are raping children in front of their grandparents and vice versa. And sometimes they blame the Sunnis. So this is what's taking place. It's taking place for years. The West didn't care. Now the Pili people are implementing the Sharia. They're saying, oh, the Muslims are raping. What do you people think about honor killings? Of miles mm -hmm. To implement the Sharia to rape women I appreciate your answers. I just want to yeah. jam in as many questions as we can in the final moments we have. In the United yeah, Kingdom course. and in Canada, we have uh, Canadians and Britons of Muslim background who commit what are called honor killings, typically killing their daughters if they dress immodestly mm -hmm. or date non-Muslims. What is your view on using violence against women who yeah. don't follow uh, strict Muslim law? Well, this is completely prohibited in Islam. You know, you cannot even accuse someone of adultery without have four eyewitnesses who actually saw, you know, the action taking place. So, you know, for people to just kill people uh, and accuse them without any evidence, without witnesses, you know, this is completely shunned on. And the person who is uh, violating his own honor by killing his wife or his daughter, he is the one who should be brought before the Sharia court and tried and punished for that crime. So, you know, this is completely alien to Islam. It, it seems to me that the West has two perspectives. On the one hand, you know, our women are completely locked away, you know, and they're not seen. On the other hand, you have these images of harems, of people being raped, you know, and doing whatever they please. The fact is that, you know, there's so many misconceptions about Islam and Muslims. What about uh, this, uh, the, this what the, ad, what about the admonition? What about the admonition to Muslim men that if they're women are not obedient that they may beat them with a miswack or another stick this is this is widely preached in mosques you know, in Canada what do you believe about that you know you know Allah said in the Quran he said do not be envious of each other both the man and the woman are equal in the eyes of God Allah gave authority to the man over the woman not that he should beat him the best example is the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who never beat any of his wives and he is the one we should take as an example. So Allah put certain things in the Quran to prevent, in fact, for you to uh, beat your wife. Because first he says to, ad uh, to advise her. And that could be a week, it could be a month, it could be a year. Then it says separate Mr. Sherry, uh, We so only have a few moments left. I, so I don't mean we interrupt. Try to avoid, we try to avoid violence yeah. as much as possible. I, I have yeah. a question. You're in the United Kingdom. You criticize their government so vociferously. Is there any Muslim country in the world that would let you criticize their government? the way the Christian Western governments treat you and protect your freedom of speech. Yeah. Is there any Muslim country in the world that would be as generous and liberal to you as the United Kingdom? You know, uh, I think you forget that I've been raided several times and many of the organizations that I've been part of have been banned and I'm vilified constantly in the media and attacked by the government. So this is not exactly, you know, uh, treating people nicely. Last Muslims question, Mr. Chowdhury, just because we're about to They're lose our... They're treated under an apartheid system. We, we apartheid. are the ones who are having our passports taken and be made citizenless oh. for your, for your Do you love the United Kingdom, Mr. Chowdhury? Do you love yeah. the UK? You know, you know, you know... Allah That's a yes created, or no Allah question. You're dancing around all my questions. I love the earth that Allah created. Do you, do you yeah, love I'm the government? Do you love the country? The earth which Allah created. Uh, well, you know, uh, the land is beautiful. The animals are beautiful. The authority Would you ever say God save the queen? Have you ever said God save the queen? But that, that applies to the whole world. Do you ever say well, God save the queen? There's no country in the world today. Mr. No, Chadwick, I don't think, uh, you know, the queen is the non-Muslims. I, I, I invite her to embrace Islam. You've never said God save the queen? Family from the hellfire. Do, you think, do you think the queen should wear I would never say a niqab? That, no. I, I would say... I would say I would say to her to embrace Islam and to save herself and her children from the hellfire. That's my invitation to the Mr. Queen. Chowdhury. Thank you for coming on our show. I appreciate your time. More source after the break. So, what do you think of my interview with Anjum Chowdhury? I, I didn't want to play gotcha with him or get into shouting matches with him. I don't think that would have worked. So, I just tried to put basic questions to him that might, he might actually answer, like, whose side is he on between the terrorists and the West? He evaded most of my questions like that. He answered a few, like that he won't say God save the Queen, or that he does not love the UK other than its animals and rocks. What an asshole. Other issues, he outright lied, like denying Islam's tenets on honor killings, sexual slavery of infidels, violence in the cause of Sharia. On the whole, it wasn't very useful. I think he managed to muddy the waters enough so that low information viewers might say, oh, he's got some good points. He lied on tough questions, but on the whole, he was completely unrepentant. Here, look how he counted for us for a sound check during a break. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
uh, Barack Obama, Bin Laden, Zawahiri, Cameron, 9-11-7-7. Is that good? Seriously, you're doing an interview on terrorism, and as a sound check, you just say 9-11 and 7-7, the date of the British subway bombings. The guy is a terrorist sympathizer, and yet he lives luxuriously in the bosom of the West he hates. Let me know what you thought of tonight's interview. Email me at thesource at sunmedia.ca. I'm Ezra Levant, and I fight for freedom and against terrorists every way I can. Good night.